My name is Reiji, Southeast Cartel man. Uh, my name is Ian Devera, aka Devera. From Southeast Cartel. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, that's my. Oh, is it? Okay. <laughs> I was like, okay, got it. All right, so basically, I'm putting on a crossover. We talk about basketball related topics and news. So let's run it down. Hey, what's the most exciting thing that just recently happened? I think it's that Houston Rockets CP3. What do you have to ask about this topic? Well, I guess we could look at it one way. Who won it? Or, you know, was it sure. worth it? Because right now, the big thing that happened really to the LA Clippers was not much of the trade, but was, uh, the movement of uh, Jerry West from uh, Golden State Warriors to the LA Clippers. Now, think about it. When Jerry West came into... Uh, and this all started actually when he was... Um, uh, he became a consultant for the Memphis Grizzlies. He changed that whole... You know, it started with, you know, Pau Gasol starting there. And now look at him. He changed that whole atmosphere to a playoff contending grindhouse type of environment. And that's what he brought into the Golden State Warriors, that championship. He gave them two championship rings when he was there. And I think he felt that, hey, I think I've done what I needed to do here. I want to, you know, do the same thing in a different team. And that's what he's starting to do now in uh, the Los Angeles Clippers. And that was, I think, one of the, you know, the first thing that he did was, hey, I think this is something that can help the Clippers in the long term. I don't know how because the fact that in any trade you always lose every time you give up the best player. So, so from your perspective, let's let's talk to our guest. This CP3 to the Rockets, do you are you in favor of it? Are you hesitant of it? What's your um, thoughts about it? For CP3, who is opting out of his contract after next season, mm-hmm. so uh, there's definitely a risk there. On paper, it looks like it might work with him and Harden, you know, uh, manning the backcourt. But you have Harden, who just came out of an MVP caliber type of season, playing the point guard for Houston Rockets, and now you have CP3 coming in, you know, and he's he's always been the ball dominant player in any team he's played in. So now you have two ball dominant players. You know, it's going to be an interesting season for the Houston Rockets, and say the same about the Clippers. Though, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Raymond, what are your thoughts about CP3 and Harden? Actually, that's just what I was going to reiterate mm-hmm. with Ian too. Yeah. Because uh, I know how Harden plays, mm-hmm. and I really can't see, just me personally, a way that they can work together uh, effectively. It's, it's always that issue when you have, you know, all-star caliber players playing in the same teams. Like, someone always has to take the lead, and someone has to be the one that's supporting, you know. So, who is it going to be? How are they going to work that? And is Harden going to be okay with that? Or CP3, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you, you, you were, I don't know if you were very clear on that, but who, wh- what, who did you think had the best side of that trade? Uh, um, but like if you think about uh, in terms of General Morey, the general manager, it, he's a very aggressive type of general manager. He wants, if he wants something, he will go at it. That's the thing that, um, I think this was a response to how Harden played during the playoffs. It's just that in a, even a playoff type of situation, you can't just have one man kind of running the show, kind of depending on one person. And that's what happened, you know, with the letdown, with the breakdown of James Harden during the playoffs. We had one really disappointing game, always on an elimination. I think this was a response to it, saying that we can't have just one person running the show and depending on one person to really run the offense of a team. And that's why I think it was, you know, I like the trade because when the playoff comes, you can't just have Harden running the play. You can't as the one James Harden comes off, the team doesn't really function well. And once he's on, the moment that, you know, you have a playoff type of situation where the defense gets tighter and they know the, they play you for seven games at most, they know how to kind of counteract. They can't have you just one person beating you. That's, and this is kind of a response to it. So I like what uh, the Houston is doing right now, saying that, hey, we understand that we can't just rely on James Harden to take over every time and to carry the team. It can happen in the season. They've done it. Like Russell Westbrook and Harden can do it in the season. But on a playoff game, it's impossible. You can't have... You know, Michael Jordan has never been able to do it with just him. This is a response to it saying, hey, we have two people that can lead a team, two people that can run the ball. So every time one comes off, we know one person can always handle and can make plays for everybody else. So that's why I think this is a good trade for Houston. So Houston got the better of this trade? Uh, For now, I think so. Because Mm -hmm. they they do need to win now. James Harden is not getting any younger. You think about it, and Chris Paul's not getting. <laughs> he's already on his, you know, the wrong side of 30s. He wants to win, and I don't think he's going to win in the Clippers. And he he knew that he he already addressed that he wants out. So this was a good thing for the Clippers too, because they knew that Chris Paul wants out. They want to get as much value as they want from him. 
and look at what they got from Jimmy Butler, all right? Jimmy Butler was a lot younger and a much better, I think, at this point in his career, but they got way less than what Clippers got for Chris Paul, so I think it was a good move too for 